Hello everyone, welcome to episode 2 of the uh, Game Dev Talks. We have the Game Dev Tutorials, now we got the Game Dev Talks. Um, sorry again guys, this is on my phone. Uh, I have not been able to rectify that problem yet, but I will. Um, it just hasn't been the forefront of my uh, concerns right now. Um, and then, uh, the hair's a mess, but you know, when you wear one of these all day, maybe I should just wear it for the tutorials. Um, you know, it's much just stuff, and anyway. Um... All right, uh, let's get into it. Today we are going to talk about uh, why I use mono game, why I do some of the other things that I do, and then the counterpoints to what I do. Because I'm, I'm by no means saying what I do is the best way to do things. Um, okay, so uh, first things first, uh, mono game. Um, well, it's open source, so. Um, you know, it's, and to be fair, that's not necessarily why I chose it, but it's one of the reasons I continue to use it, because originally it was XNA that I was learning, and that obviously was not open source, that was Microsoft-backed. Um, and to an extent, mono game kind of is, too. Um, like I've definitely been to Xbox uh, stuff where uh, there's uh, mono game guys there, if that makes sense. Um, but it's open source, and so nobody can really stop it. You know, nobody can take it away. Development isn't just going to end because there's always the open source community to, to bolster it. Um, in a way, the game dev tutorials do bolster that open source kind of feel. Um, you know, it's not editing the base mono code code, but it is building on top of it for you guys. Um, it's cross-platform, so mono game goes wherever. Um, now... That is one of the reasons that I chose it, uh, even when it was back in XNA days, uh, because it was Windows Phone and Xbox and computer. So it was cross-platform then, even though it's much more so now. Um, so that's a big deal. Cross-platform will help. You know, if I ever have a game that does big enough to justify porting it, then you know you you have that ability without having to rewrite your whole code. You just have to change really out your input for the most part, and then maybe some. Um, memory issues and whatnot. Um, let's see, uh, it's you have virtually full control. So unlike with Unity, where there's kind of the Unity pipeline, and you have to kind of, I say you have to, it almost forces you to stick within the pipeline, um, and that's for better sometimes. But we'll get to the, the counterpoints in a bit. Um, you have. I don't even know how to explain it. You're you're in this pipeline, and this pipeline is super powerful. But if you want something to work just a little bit outside the pipeline, the amount of work to get that to work is tremendous, and tend tend to have a lot of spaghetti code doing it. Uh, if you don't know what spaghetti code means, spaghetti code means uh, very disorganized code that's hard to read. Um, that's a, a very base level version of what spaghetti code means. Um, it actually comes from using go tos a long time ago, where this piece of code talks to this other piece of code over here, which talks to this piece of code, which talks to this piece of code, and that's not linear, so it was spaghetti. It was like spaghetti weaving through your code. But anyway, um, neither here nor there, but that's why these talks are fun, because I can get off on tangents. Um, so um, you have virtually full control in mono game. Um, in fact, a lot of the stuff in mono game I don't even use. Um, and that's because you don't have to. You're not forced to. Game components, I think is what they're called. I haven't used them for like a decade, so excuse me if I get these terms wrong. But game components and some different things that uh, help you process things on the screen, which are nice if you know nothing, but you'll probably stop using them rapidly. I've not seen people giving tutorials even using them, so um, just keep that in mind. But Mono Game is kind of just like a console program, but with... The ability to draw to the screen, uh, you know, sprites and, and fonts and stuff. And that's all I really wanted. I wanted to write a game. I didn't want to script a game. I didn't want to uh, to have my hand held through the process. I wanted to learn how to do it. Um, I've always been that way with programming. I've always wanted to be able to do it all. And for the most part, I can. And so... I don't think I would be able to now had I not started with that attitude a decade ago. Um, so that's it's important to me. It may be something that you don't like, but again, we'll get to the counters in a minute. Um, 
I tried quite a few different things before getting into this. Uh, back when I was getting into game programming, you didn't have... You know, Unity existed, but it wasn't good. Um, Unreal Engine cost a fortune. You couldn't even deal with it for free. Um, and I'm missing one. But anyway, they were expensive, very expensive. Expensive enough that a college student was like, whoa, no way. Uh-uh. Now it's a little different, but... You couldn't do this next thing, and that next thing was C Sharp. Um, C Sharp uh, requires a lot less code than a C++, but has still probably 95% of the power of C++. And for me, that was super important because uh, at the time, and Java has gotten better, Java was slow. C++ has always been super fast, and of course C, which is just blazing fast. Um, without going down to, you know, writing binary, it's about as fast as you can get. Because uh, you'd be writing assembly straight to that. If you don't understand what that means, guys, assembly is what your processor takes before it goes to ones and zeros. Uh, so it's like one step above ones and zeros. Um, when you I don't want to get too much into it, but it, your processor likes assembly. Let's put it that way. Um, C Sharp is, it probably takes less than half the code to write C Sharp versus C++. And not only is it about half the total code, or maybe less, um, it's even faster than that. I would say that writing the same small to medium project in C++ versus C Sharp, C Sharp is probably 80 to 90% faster, um, which is tremendous. And we're talking about a single dude making a game. Well, if you're a single human making a game and you can cut your code by four-fifths, oh, that's, that's a no-brainer. So that kind of threw out some of the other stuff. Remember, Unity wasn't really a thing. Um, and so the idea that I could write games in C Sharp was just... Super, super appealing. Um, it was also my first good experience making games because I tried using DirectX. I tried using different things. I tried doing these other things, and they were just clunky, and I was fighting my lack of knowledge of C++, even though that was my original language in college, but fighting the language because it's not an easy language to learn while trying to learn video game making, game development was not fun. That was hard. Uh, and, you know, I, I got stuff done, but it wasn't good enough. It was too much. Um, and so that's another reason. And then, so C Sharp slash Mono Game is awesome for almost any indie-sized project. Um, the only thing I would say it's probably not good enough is a massive AAA game that is really going to be pushing a processor hard. If you're going to be pushing your processors and your GPUs super hard, getting that 5, maybe even 7% of overhead that you lose between C Sharp and C++ slash just regular C, um, well, you're, you're going to need that extra overhead. Let's just put it that way. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't make... A really good game, even AAA stuff. I mean, you see that with with Unity, you see it working, but you're gonna have to shave off the ends a little bit, and that is what it is. But since we're indie talks mostly, then we really don't have to worry about those kinds of things. And so that was a counter I just gave you, a counter on optimization. Um, so it takes a much longer time to get into it, you know, as opposed to say, a Unity, where you're kind of dragging and dropping a lot of stuff. There's a lot of code available on their marketplace. There's a lot of scripting available. There's a lot of things available. So you can almost plug and play a game in Unity. I wouldn't really call it making a game, though. Like, I would call that, you know, making a Lego game. And that's that's where you hear, on Steam, you hear Asset Flip, or you hear um, just low quality. You hear lots of things, because... Unless you're using and actually working with Unity at a much greater level, you're prone to producing something that is 
unacceptably low quality. Um, but Unity can make a game very quickly. You can pop a game out in Unity in a few hours. Uh, I don't recommend it. Nobody will buy it. You know, it's not something that is going to be a great experience for you, but you absolutely can do that. Um, and so that's a negative towards mono game. Mono game just takes longer, a lot longer. Um, let's see. I covered the, the optimization part. So if you are trying to make the next Call of Duty C Sharp as the base for your engine, probably not a good idea. Although a lot of their scripting is done in C Sharp. But here nor there, um, just want to put that out there. So that covers why I use Mono Game. Um, and why I recommend Mono, Mono Game for people to get into this. Um, you're going to have a much greater understanding of what you're doing by using Mono Game than you will by using Unity. Um, another thing about the way I do things is no third-party software. Um, and when I say no third-party software, I mean in my game the software is not there. I do use what's called Spine for animations. I've been, it's been requested that I go over what I use Spine for, and I will do that. Um, when I have a better setup. Um, so I basically use it for animations for the new game. Um, and I'll probably be using it for the next couple games because I spent a long time on the content processors for the importing of the uh, spine files. So I really like the way that it works. Um, it's a bone system. You can look it up. It's, it's great. It's awesome. But their importers imported it in such a way that it was too uh, narrow. And so I had to do a lot of work to broaden it out. Um, I, I don't want to get into exactly what I did. It is a very complex subject. Um, and maybe at some point I will, but this is not quite the time. But anyway, so there's no third-party so uh, programming or software in my games. There is spine files that I load through my own cus fully customized, 100% from scratch uh, spine uh, processor. Okay? Um, but why do I use no third party code? Well, the biggest reason is because I wanted to learn to do things. And the second you start throwing third party software in your code, you start to give way to actually learning what you're doing. You're not learning, you're just hooking up what somebody else did. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, you can make some really great games that way. But you're not going to know how to do it. You're not going to know how to edit it. You're not going to know how to work with it. If there's a bug, you're going to be uh, waiting for that dev to fix it. If there is a um, feature you need and it's not high on their plan list, who knows how long you'll be waiting for that sucker. Um, so, you know, there's... <laughs> there's definite negatives if it doesn't work perfectly right right off the bat for you. Um, sorry, the lighting went crazy. My monitors just all went off at the same time. Um, which is funny because there's two computers. But anyway. Um, <sighs> Third-party software has its place, and it's great. And I'm not making the argument against ever using third-party software. But... I know I can make it, I know I can make it work, and I know that I can do it, so I do do it, if that makes sense. Even if it costs me a month, two months, three months to get something done, I would prefer to have it, because I guess I will go a little bit deeper into the spine thing, because it's hard to explain why that I do what I do. So I grabbed, I got spine, right? And I was super excited, I paid for it, all that kind of stuff, you know, I. It was cool. I worked with it. I built the skeleton. I got it all hooked up. I got an artist to make the art for it. We got it all together. And I went to import it, and I couldn't change it out. Not really. I mean, there is a way to do it in Spine, but it requires loading all of the gear possible all at once. And if you know anything about games, <laughs> that's not good. Um, especially because I've already got, I don't know, 15 sets of gear in Guilds of Delinar, maybe more, I don't, uh, that's a lot, and so, and that's not even a lot, really, I want to have 60, 70 sets of gear in Guilds of Delinar, so the idea that I would have to load 60 or 70 
sets of gear and each gear has different sizes so that they can be interpolated it's it's crazy um how much you would have to load your load screen would be horrible um and then also every different character so uh humans dwarves goblins or what's in there now but there will be many more um would have because the 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 gear has to fit on all of them and so the way that we did the skeletons the way we sized the skeletons the way that we we deformed the skeletons wasn't in uh spine so we had to add all of that functionality and when i say we i'm working with the artist uh because there was quite a lot of of uh close uh work close interaction between the two of us to get it all to work um and i'm not saying it's some kind of crazy genius thing but these are two dudes that never done it before so we're trying to figure out how to make this work and so uh when we finally got it to work we're really happy with the outcome and you can see it in the in the videos but uh the gear switching and everything it's pretty seamless and it looks good um but that wasn't there and I didn't realize I was going to have to put that much work into things. I thought Spine, because you can see it in their videos, they switch out gear on stuff. They switch out pieces of art, which is what switching out gear is, in their videos. But they don't go into how they do it, and the way they did it was not the way I needed them to do it. Now, that doesn't mean it's not perfect for whatever application other people are doing, but it wasn't perfect for me. And therefore, um, I had to add things. And I've actually added things I didn't know I needed and maybe those wouldn't have been there too. I don't even know because by it, I'd already gone down the rabbit hole of creating my own code. Um, okay, so what's the counters? I think I covered everything. Let me see real quick. Um, oh, and then updates can break your game, right? So um, if somebody puts out a new version of Spine and it changes the code files that come into my game, um, well, I have two options. One, no more new code files, uh, which is no more new skeletons, which it's not the end of the world, um, but it would suck. Or I have to redo my importer to handle, you know, a change in that. Now, that's unlikely because it would also break their stuff. Um, and most of their importers are done by third parties. At least that's the way I understand it. And so, um, you know, it's unlikely, but it could happen. And if I have a game, and I'm trying to put out a giant update, I'm really excited, and the next thing you know, I can't create skeletons, that's a problem. Um, so, having the capability to do it on your own is, is very helpful, um, and not having to worry about that. So, what's the counters? Well, again, everything takes longer. Um, if there was something that existed that did exactly what I needed it to do, and it literally was just drag this into your program hook up the uh, references and you're golden. Um, well, would have saved me probably three months of programming. Um, this project, Guild of Delinar, is massively behind. Um, I wanted it out in August. It is now the following uh, February. So you can kind of see... First of all, I bit off a little bit more than maybe I should have. Um, it's not more than I can chew, but it is more than I probably should have. Second of all, I didn't think that Spine was going to require that much work on my part, and that was my, uh, it was a bit of a downfall. I probably could have written the whole thing from scratch. <laughs> At least what I need from it. Uh, Spine has some crazy shit in it, but I don't use that stuff, so, um, I probably could have just rewritten it, rewritten it, but too late now. Um, but everything takes longer. Everything takes longer doing it this, this way. And that, that's a function of having the control over your code. Um, but that's a counter argument. You also have to be able to make the code. Um, the amount of research and learning and all of that that you have to do in order to go sans third parties software uh, is tremendous. You have to become at least good at almost everything. Uh, maybe even an expert at a lot more than you probably would otherwise have to do. And so that, that's a big deal, too. Um, also, you can produce a bigger game because your budget probably isn't going to shrink due to the new program by much. I think Spine's a few hundred bucks 
Um, when you compare that to rewriting the whole thing, let's say it takes six months to write everything in there for the skeletons and the animations and the editor to do it and all that kind of stuff. Um, well, 300 bucks is a couple days worth of paying a wage and six months is, I don't know, 22 times six, average of 22 days, I think, work days per, per month, if I remember right. So you're, you're talking, you know, 132 hours, uh, days, I'm sorry, days, thousand hours-ish um, to do this. And that, that's a tremendous amount of, of money to make that happen. If you don't have somebody on your team that can do that kind of work, you also don't even have a choice. So, um, yeah, again, my philosophy of learning all that I can helped me out here because... When a, a situation presented itself, I'm able to uh, say, all right, well, I can do that. It may take me some time, but I can do that. And I did. So um, counters are more time uh, and ex expanding your budget because the cost of buying the third party program is almost always cheaper than doing it yourself, um, provided that it fits. So finding the third party software that fits perfectly is, is the bigger challenge. Um, all right, uh, why do I work in a small team? Budgets. Um, going along with it, what do I think, if I had the resources to do it, what would I make, what size of team would I want? Well, I want five programmers and five artists, so 10 people um, on the development team. That doesn't count marketing, that doesn't count um, customer service, although if you have five, if you have 10 people doing, you can spread the customer service out provided people aren't completely socially broken. But when you're dealing with programming, <laughs> it's not uncommon that you have some pretty socially broken people. I'm one of them a lot of times. I've had to learn a lot about just talking to people um, and trying not to come off abrasive. Uh, and that's something that, that we're going to struggle with as a community um, because artists are not always the most social people and nor are programmers. And so, you know, it's something that you need to put some time into. And that's why I told you last video, release a game and learn about releasing a game and do it with a small project because, man, there's things just even about the social atmosphere of it that just, they're, they're hard for, for, especially for me, but I assume for some of you as well. Um, but yeah, so small team is only, is based, basically based on budget. Um, I would love to have the ability to expand that team. We'll see what happens. You know, I, I have high hopes for Guilds of Delinar, you know, uh, by the time it's finally finished, not, not just early access, but by the time we get to full release, I'm really hoping to have, you know, a really still exp experience for people to play. Um, I think it's the very best game I've ever made, and we'll see what happens there. Okay, sorry. Don't want to shield too much for myself here. I've, this is not about that. I'm just relating. It's easy for me to relate things to, to what I'm doing. Um, uh, let's see. What is the counter to have a bigger team? Okay, so for every person that you bring in, you are going to exponentially lose efficiency. What does that mean? Well, having two people, you're not going to get 200% work, right? So one person, 100% work. Two people, you don't get 200% work. It just doesn't work that way. I've had, I've had companies. So I started in the web world. I owned a company for eight years, and I worked in the web world for a couple years before that. Uh, I spent a decade in... Uh, you know, full web stack kind of stuff. Um, and then apps and whatnot for business tools. Um, and at the largest, my company was five people. It's not huge, but it was, it was much larger than I am now. Um, just the communication between the people to make sure you're working on the same thing reduces that efficiency from 100% per person down. Um, I would say, in general... With a really good atmosphere, you'll be at 180% for the two people. By the time you hit five people, you're probably only at 300% efficiency. So instead of being at 500% efficiency, five people, you're probably around 300% efficiency. And that only gets worse the more employees you get. So when you see these ginormous companies like Blizzard, 
like uh, any Dice or any of EA's, you know, teams or um, you know, all of this, all these really large studios, they may have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people working on a project, but their efficiency is so low per person, um, it, it's hard to even describe. Um, you know, they'll staff up for these crunch periods. They'll staff, they'll bring in a hundred more people to try to push a project out. And it's actually been documented that sometimes when they do that, they actually lose productivity and not gain productivity due to the training process. Um, given enough time, those people would most likely add to the efficiency rating. But if you do it too late, you don't have time to get the people trained up. So um, team size is important. You need to think about that. You can't just say, oh, man, I need to double up what I'm doing. I got to get another dude mm, or girl. I don't mean when I say dude, I actually don't mean guy or girl. Just for the record, I mean human. Um, I <laughs> grew up with a bunch of little sisters and we always called each other dude. So I, I, I understand that's not normal, but I'm just telling you, I do not mean guy when I say dude. I mean human. Um so, you know, let's just squish that before you get that. So hopefully that gets you, gives you guys an idea of why I do what I do. Um, part of it is where I came from. Part of it is, you know, uh, budget reasons. Part of it is um, my love for C-sharp, and I will not uh, try to hide it. I am heavily biased for C-sharp. I honestly don't understand now that it's open source why people even use most other things. Um, C Sharp is amazing. If I only ever got to know one language, it would be C Sharp. Um, that's, and I know 30 plus languages, uh, at least well enough to write decent little simple applications, and some of them I know and have written very large scale applications in. Um, anyway, um, I hope that gives you guys a little insight about me and this crazy human that's been talking to you for 29 or 39 uh, tutorials. And, uh, you know, guys, I, I really hope you guys are enjoying these talks. I hope you're getting something out of it. I hope that they help you to see uh, how to move forward in the industry. Um, again, if you do like these, make sure you hit the like button. And if you do uh, want to see more or you want to check out, first, check out the tutorials. But if you want to see more of this and know when the new stuff is coming out, hit that bell button, hit that uh, subscribe button, then hit the bell button. And then you'll be notified when all this comes out. Um, you know, keep at it. Get to that computer. Put in some lines of code. It gets easier after you write that first line each day. Um, it's the hardest line you write during the day is the first line. So get there, write that line of code, and maybe another 100 or 200 will come pouring out of you. Um, so get there. Get out there. Get it done. Make some games. And make sure you're showing me what you're making. Because, man, I'm loving watching what you guys are making. I really am. They are awesome. I've seen a few different projects. And I am very happy uh, to have been a part of you guys' journey. Uh, and I hope to continue to be. So if you have more ideas for these talks, tell me. Uh, it doesn't mean I can get to them right away. But, uh, you know, tell me and I'll do my best to get to them Um and hopefully, again, that I, I can be a, a positive uh, influence on your uh, your future in game devving. All right, guys. Have a good one. Thank you so much.